The chair recognizes the honorable member for East Grand Bahama. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Deputy. Uh, Mr. Deputy, I very quickly before I, I get into my uh, presentation, uh, I wanted to uh, say a special congratulations to a young uh, lady who is in my constituency, uh, Ms. Grace Cooper, uh, 14 years old, uh, who uh, is, was awarded the Rising Star Award uh, during this month's uh, youth, uh, during youth month this, this month, October. Uh, she traveled along with her uh, mother on the flight with me this morning, where this evening she will be receiving her award. So I wanted to say a special congratulations to uh, little Miss Grace uh, Cooper. Uh, Mr. Deputy, today I rise on behalf of the good people of the East Grand Bahama constituency. I rise on behalf of the people in Sweetings Key those people who are still waiting on their dock, they are still waiting on their school, they are still waiting on their government building. I rise on behalf of the settlements of East Grand Bahama from McLeanstown all the way to Old Freetown, who are still waiting on their resident doctor uh, in the area for East Grand Bahama. Uh, they are still waiting on their seawall. And we, while there is work being done in McLeanstown on the school, we also are waiting on what is happening with respect to the school in High Rock. I rise on behalf of the over the bridge residents who are still waiting on their home repairs. I rise on behalf of those constituents who live in Arden Forest, Water Key, Coral Gardens, Fortune Bay, Chesapeake, and Lincoln Green. And they are still waiting on their home repairs. They are still waiting on their jobs, their small business assistance, and relief from the high prices and relief from inflation. But Mr. Deputy, it has been a privilege to serve and to represent the good people of the East Grand Bahama constituency. I wish to thank Mr. Deputy, the newly appointed Governor General, Her Excellency Cynthia Mother Pratt, for reading the speech from this room. She did so with her usual grace and elegance. Having served with her in this house between 2007 and 2012, I've come to have the utmost respect for Her Excellency Cynthia Mother Pratt. Mr. Deputy, the PLP has, has presented another good speech. They are very good at making speeches. Yes, yes, yes. However, given the state of our country, no one can deny that we need more than a good speech. There, are, there were many promises made in this speech. There are many promises were made in the last speech. We have heard many of them before. If it's one thing they are good at, it's making promises. But what I and many others are not convinced of is whether they will deliver on yeah. those promises. Yes. Will not. <laughs> many, like me, are wondering why the reset and why now? But this is what I believe. This is my belief, my opinion. Yes, if the PLP government was facing unprecedented criticism, 
businesses and the general public were suffering from high electricity prices. Yep. High inflation, in particular, in particular, unescapable high food prices, even the PLP are publicly admitting that the poor is catching hell. Mm -hmm. Adding the 10% on bread basket items for VAT yeah. is making it extremely difficult for ordinary Bahamians to be able to survive. Absolutely. Even the church, the Anglican bishop, is now calling on the government to take VAT off bread basket items. The Christian thing. No reset, no new speech from the throne is going to cause us to forget this. Mr. Deputy, people every day feel the pressure at the gas pump. People are making real life decisions on how far they have to travel. Today, gas is now over six dollars at the pump. Mr. Deputy, we, we will not just overlook or brush off that the PLP government has directly increased the cost of medication. Elderly constituents every day lament and complain of the increase of the cost of medication. Elderly constituents every day lament and complain of the increase in medication. I have constituents like Elder Cooper like Wilton Thomas, Freddie Sands, who complain about the eye equipment in Freeport not working. It's not been working for months. We will not just let these things go. Mr. Deputy, businesses crippled under the pressure of taxes and inflation with no help in sight. We won't just let that slide under the rug. Revelation after revelation in the Ministry of Immigration. Must we just forget about the citizenship funeral? Should we just sweep under the rug the unknown Chinese workers debacle? And worse, still, the removal of the director of immigration who should have been protected as a whistleblower. Mr. Deputy, should we have selective amnesia to the near $9 million wasted by the abrupt, unexplained abandonment of the new Central Bank building in Royal Victoria Gardens? We will not just bypass and overlook at the, at best, incomplete budget that did not account for the $110 million loan provided to BPL, which by law, if released from the consolidated fund, should have been articulated in the budget. Violation of the law. Mr. Deputy. They want us to just ignore the now 10, yes, 10 financial and budgetary reports that are now late. We should just bypass that, forget about that, and move on. The government now has four budgetary reports that are passed to. The government has yet to publish the monthly reports for June, July, and August of this year, nor have they published the fourth quarter fiscal report for the fiscal year of 2022 and 2023. Shame. And of course, the Fiscal Responsibility Council is now extremely late. 
on the six outstanding assessment reports the council was to provide to parliament mm -hmm. on its documented review of each of the following. The government's fiscal strategy report, the midterm budgetary statement, and the annual budgetary statement for 2021-2022, and for this fiscal year, 2022-2023. The Council is to provide three reports every year with a statutory deadline. It has not published a single report since the PLP took office over two years ago. Not one. We will not just bypass this. They want us to sweep under the rug, Mr. Deputy, that based on the statements in the press by the council membership, that it would seem that there is no current chairperson of the council and that the council itself is dysfunctional and in limbo. Mr. Deputy, what about the public fight in Grand Bahama between the government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority? Gee. The facts actually speak for themselves. 2022, Grand Bahama had an economic decline of 9% or over $154 million. No hurricanes, no COVID during 2022 in Grand Bahama, but yet Grand Bahama has had the worst decline in the country. Now I'm sure there are those who will say, carnival is coming. Celebration key is coming. Well, Mr. Deputy, I am very proud of the work that the Free National Movement did in executing the heads of agreement to ensure that that project started. I saw recently where the shipyard announced their their groundbreaking is coming next week, I believe it is, where they uh, announced their new expansion and they are, uh, their new docks. Well, again, Mr. Deputy, I am extremely pleased that the Free National Movement approved the expansion project. I am extremely pleased that the Free National Movement announced this project before Y'all didn't announce that. Y'all didn't announce that. We, talk, we, we, we are talking about the expansion of the shipyard. Stay focused. Stay focused, bro. Stay focused. Stay in the strip. We are, Mr. Deputy, they can make Hold as up. much noise as they Numbers. feel like I have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. And the fact. The Weller, and the fact. The Weller Group. The Discovery, the Discovery Bay project. I am very pleased that the Free Nasta Movement approved this project and announced this project when we were in office. On the floor. The medical school that is progressive, the medical school that, that was completed, built. I am again very pleased that it was the Free National Movement that approved this project, broke ground on this project, yes, and we were there when the project had gotten started. <laughs> Mr. Deputy, you are not doing enough for the family islands. Abaco, Long Island, Elutra. Michael, all decreased in 2022. The most interesting thing, though, is that they increased in 2020 and 2021 under the Free National Movement. Mm. Mr. Deputy, before we look at the new speech from this room, we have to ask ourselves about the promises made in the last speech from the drone. You know, it's, it's good to have a new one. That's right. But, but, you, but you also have to, to, to look at 
what was done in the old one and to see what's going on in the old one before you start with the new one. Mm -hmm. Mr. Deputy, they promised to address the high cost of living, which has not been addressed. They promised to address the airports with PPPs. And I might add, they also promised to publish and bring to this place their policy on PPPs. They promised to bring legislation, the National Health Insurance Act. They promised to bring the Child Protection Act. They promised to replace and repeal the Commercial Enterprise Act. They promised to deliver the Rent for Own program. They promised also to deliver two new hospitals, not clinics, not clinics, two new hospitals, not clinics. They also committed the Local Government Act. They also committed to complete the implementation of FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act. They also committed to bring measures to encourage renewable energy. They also promised to deliver the Bahamas Invest. Many of marriages ended because of failure. They also promised to bring new. <laughs> They also promised to bring new building codes. It is, it is amazing the amount of promises that were made inside the speech from the throne. They, they also committed, Mr. Deputy, to bring a national strategy for water management, the Urban Renewal Authority, the Second Chance Job Program. They, they promised to do these things. They also promised the Hotel Encouragement Act Amendment. They also promised a new Ministry of Natural Resources. A new Ministry of Natural Resources. Boy, that sounds so good. But that's what they promised and has yet to deliver. They also promised a one-stop shop for Grand Bahama Investments. They also promised Local government for New Providence. They also promised digitization legislation, anti-corruption legislation. That's what they promised as well. You in the chair now? You in the chair now? Do it. Two years in. It's on you now. You in the chair. And they come with a new one. It's on you. You in the chair. But yet they have not completed the old one. Mr. Deputy, Mr. Deputy, I read a letter from the art from the editor. Or oh, a letter, a letter to the editor, sorry. I read a letter to the editor on government service. I won't call the person I won't call the person's name. Um, but it was done on the 13th of October of this year. And I just want to read a snippet of what uh, this person said. Having passed its two-year anniversary in office, I expected that this administration would have devoted some attention to addressing the many vexing and annoying issues affecting Bahamians and local businesses when doing business in this country. Since coming to office, this administration has been too tolerant in allowing public offices and department heads to introduce policies and measures that lack reasonableness and proportionality, which have only served to frustrate Bahamians to no end. This is what, what, what also, uh, this part also got to me. When seeking the most basic service, Bahamians are routinely turned away with endless requests for more information and documents, which are already resident with the government and can be accessed electronically if needed. 
This was a point that we had had as a vision for a goal for the government. It was this once only program or once only policy where if a government had a piece of information about you that no other government agency was allowed to ask you to provide that same piece of information, but that the government had to go to the other government agency and access that information. It is, it is about the government working for you and you not working for the government. They committed in their last speech from the throne legislation on digitization. Unfortunately, we have not heard a lot about this. There, are, there were some additional services that were added to the My Gateway platform that we created. Mm -hmm. we did, right? And we created that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, plat my, yeah. my Gateway, we created that. And a new website that uh, we saw in the paper today, which should be delivered next year. But where is the legislation? Where is the program and what progress has been made over the last two years? I want you to make Bain and Grantstown a minister <laughs> so that he can properly move this forward. And I say this with all seriousness because I, I, I genuinely believe <laughs> that. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm looking at him. That's, that's the looking minister of digitization. He said I'm looking long, at him. Because, because, I, because I genuinely believe that you need to have you need to have a minister who is sitting around a cabinet table who is devoted to moving digitization forward you need to have that we we left draft legislation for the ministry of information technology and innovation bill, we left that in place, and we also left, in pl left a draft of the e-government bill in place. We are waiting to see the implementation also of the contributory pension for existing and new employees. That was something that this government um, uh, committed, they promised. We are waiting to see the plans on the implementation for the paid contributory pension for existing and new employees. Small business development and private sector development. Mr. Deputy, the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce, they made two statements. Now, Bahamas Chamber of Commerce is the uh, largest private sector uh, advo advocation or uh, uh, advocacy group that represents private sector business. In fact, if you put all of those businesses that are a part of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, they are the largest employer of Bahamians in this country. They made two statements. One before the speech from the throne, and one after the speech from the throne. The one that they made before the speech from the throne, they pleaded with the government to use the speech from the throne to, and I quote, the, B, the BCCEC is hopeful that they can expect more policies that will positively impact businesses during the reconvening of parliament. The business community's desire is for more business-friendly policies. That is what they said before this recent speech from the throne. Unbelievably, after the speech from the throne, they made another statement. And I quote from the statement that they made. Regrettably, mm. that's that off wrong. <laughs> but regrettably, the government did not address other matters such as improving digitization across government agencies. The same point that I made recently. Plans to, re to reform our business tax system. A national framework 
for public-private partnership. The same point that I made saying that the government promised to deliver a policy on pu public-private partnerships. Business-related incentives to establish and grow industries. A legislative framework to provide financial support to businesses negatively impacted by government-imposed challenges like prolonged and extensive road works. A plan which will address and remediate public infrastructure strain, such as flooding after heavy rains, as this impedes access to businesses. And Mr. Deputy, everyone in this country could attest that when you have heavy rain in Nassau, you cannot move. And from their point of view, they are looking at it from a business side, that if you have heavy rain and this problem is not solved, then people cannot make it to work and they cannot make it as customers to their businesses. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Deputy, the largest employer, the largest, the, the, the advocacy group that represents the largest number of private sector companies has a difficulty that there are not enough policies were articulated in this recent speech from the Trump. Mm. They gave a statement before the speech telling you what they want to see. And then they made a statement after the speech saying, you didn't listen to us. You didn't put these things in it. Mr. Deputy in East Grand Bahama, my constituents are very concerned with what I mentioned earlier. But I spoke to the Minister for Health, the member for Tall Pines, um, on a very important issue, which is having a resident living doctor in East Grand Bahama. And Mr. Deputy, you've traveled there. Um, you know the distance between McLeanstown and Freeport. You know the distance between High Rock and Freeport, which unfortunately is for anyone who is in a critical accident, it is a matter of life and death. Because it takes you at least an hour or 45 minutes for an ambulance to move from Freeport to McLeanstown. They also are asking for a resident nurse in Sweetings Key. Because from Sweetings Key, you have to travel by boat from McLeanstown to Sweetings Key. And so if there's an incident that took place in Sweetings Key, you have to move from Freeport to McLeanstown. And then you have to catch a boat from McLeanstown to Sweetings Key. As I said, Mr. Deputy, we have seen progress on the school in McLeanstown, and I wish to thank the member for Angliston for moving that uh, project forward. Um, and we would like to know when can we expect it to be open um, when can we expect the students to be able to participate in, uh, to be able to take classes um, at that school? Um, Mr. Deputy, as I close, there was a very serious incident that took place in Sweeting Ski a few weeks ago, where an employee of the Water and Sewage Corporation was unfortunately crushed to death when the water tank uh, structure collapsed, and it collapsed on him. I've spoken and met with the family, and I will say, Mr. Deputy, that the circumstances of that deserves there to be an inquiry. And I think the family deserves to have an inquiry done. There is a, if, if there's gonna be an ingress, then that's fine. I mean, I, I haven't heard that there's gonna be an ingress, but if, if there's gonna be an ingress, then, then wonderful, um, that's fine. Um, but 
The only issue that I wish it to be known is that it deserves for there to be an inquiry into the circumstances of his death. Um, and once the inquiry is done, uh, we hope that uh, whatever the results are, uh, we hope that those things uh, will be resolved in the best interest of the family. Um, so Mr. Deputy, uh, that is the contribution of East Grand Bahama. We wish to thank the Governor General uh, who did a wonderful job of reading uh, the new speech from the throne. But unfortunately, Mr. Deputy, uh, the good speech does not at all <coughs> cause us to forget what state the Bahamas was in before the speech because the speech does not change our situation. It does not make our life any better because before the speech, people were suffering. After the speech, people still suffer. Yes. And so, Mr. Deputy, we will not be satisfied until relief is brought to the people of the Bahamas. Thank you very much.